my name is Banzin Kahala Vaisabigal. I'm 12th grade and senior at Wana High School and I'm from Wanai Valley Homestead. This is the Marine Science Learning Center class. Um, and some things we do here is we raise our own, or we catch and raise our own fish, um, ogo or limu, and then we also have a chance to provide it to our, our community. So give, giving back after like reproducing it and making a lot of it. It doesn't seem like much, but when we get on the field together and we start um, putting, doing hands-on work, then we see plenty happy faces and plenty of people staying fit and out of trouble. So that's, that's the main thing here is to work together, be, become a family, and how we can see uh, why not growing again. Why and I is um, a community that is rooted in um, tradition. This coastline was a significant source of food, not just from the ocean, but from the land. And even though we're the Marine Science Learning Center and we do focus on the ocean, we really strive to help the kids to understand that the connection between mountain and ocean is really critical, especially for um, fish like the mullet which we are named after. Why anai means mullet water. Anai is the full grown stage of the mullet. And it was once a very important food source and it's now become more difficult to find in our waters. This side of the island was historically known for mullet, particularly the anai phase. So we're, we're, we're really happy to be a part of this step, I guess you could say, in raising ama um, hopefully to a point where it, it was once proliferating on the island. From what um, I can understand from, you know, literature, kupuna, um, even practitioners, right? There were a few species of fish that were thought to be commonly cultured in Lokoia. Amaama definitely is one. Um, Ava, the milkfish, is one. You know, these, these are animals that um, Really, it makes a lot of sense that they were raised in these these fish ponds. The, their life history, they uh, you know they feed on phytoplankton, zooplankton, which is in a lot of abundance when you have these systems designed to sort of mix seawater, freshwater, and nutrients together. And it really makes sense that those were the animals to to choose to culture. I'm up right there at the top of the list for for um, practitioners that want to see it back in Lokoya. Yeah. From here, from our facility, we're gonna pack them and ship them to Hilo um, for the Huakai. And hopefully from there, they have a better chance of surviving in the wild, in, in the fish pond there. And then they can continue on their life and hopefully reproduce and you know, up the wild population of mullet in that area. Hopefully in, in parts all over the state. That's the long-term goal is to get the counts of uh, wild mullet, Hawaiian mullet, get those counts up again. While the stocking of Lokuya is one way of bringing the fish back, um, another thing that we want to focus on and really highlight is like, how do we get the fish to come back in to the local uh, um, naturally? The mo'oku auhau of the ama lead back to here. And so that's why we were thinking that they would survive. And actually, I think it was a few months ago that we um, brought over like 120 pua ama from, that were bred at OI and we had 100% survival rate. And so we're thinking, okay, right on, you know, it's because um, maybe the fish remember the water, right? Um, and so this time around, we're just trying to bring more fish over to see like, okay, now that we know that they survive, then what are the methods to continue this this process moving forward. Aloha mai kako. my name is Kamala uh, Warren. I grew up at Waiuli, um, that's where Hui Ho'ole Malua, the organization, um, 
that um, now occupies this space. Um, that's where we started at Waiuli at Honokia Loko. And so um, it's actually a group of me, Nohoku and Manoa, a group of friends. We grew up together. All of our families grew up together. And, you know, we went through a period in our life where we kind of separated because we're all doing our own thing yeah as adults young adults and then eventually we came back together and decided that we wanted to do something you know not work a nine to four for somebody else and so um we kind of joined forces we all come from families that we you know like at the foundation of it you have to be a contributing member of your community right that's just that's just the way we was all brought up right and i think those are some of the values and and the reasons why we all like been able to be successful together, you know? We heard from the community, association, people that were in there that this property was coming up. And to keep it local, to keep it present in our, in our, our hands and as a resource for, for our community, rather than selling it to who knows who, we, we jumped at it. And with that said, the family that lived here before we came, it was a local Japanese family, and they raised fish. They would let anybody come, bring their bamboo poles, whatnot, especially if, it, if your family had kids. We're told by many people who come here, they grew up coming, you know, fishing for a hole hole or fishing for tilapia with their families. I guess as the, the family moved away, they wanted the property to stay in local hands, especially if it was educational. So our partnership with Kaumeki Kaeo kind of became a perfect opportunity to be on this site. Our school partnered with this Bukui Hole Maluo and we started coming here, what, like three years ago, I think? And we helped with the Aina, do Aina work and local Ia kind work. This is what, like our life, basically, to help revive what our kupuna used to do and just all that kind of stuff is like, like touches your heart, you know. It's like feeds into what your ancestors are trying to teach you basically. It connects you to who you are as a person. Within my position with Hawaii Sea Grant um, as an aquaculture extension agent, when I was hired, the first thing I thought of was aquaculture in Hawaii began with Lokoya, it began with Lava'i'a. Um, and so to honor the indigenous practice of Hawaii is really important to me, not just as an aquaculture extension agent, but as a Hawaiian, as a, as a person of this Aina. With all of these aquaculture facilities, right, there's a lot of Western science behind it, but there's a lot, also a lot of, you know, indigenous science behind it. I learned how to build one pahu'i'a, one fish cage, and then I learned how to take care of pua'ama, and how important water quality is and like how to actually raise fish to eat them and just seeing the process that from before when they brought the first batch of pua ama, just seeing that process and how the ama ama are thriving now in like these local is like real. Aloha, o wau o pua ana te kāro, he hamana wau mā ka umeke kāeo mā ke o kaha, ai wau mā kapa umekuma lua, um, no hilo mai au. My kula ana here at Maui is to take care of the pua ama for my senior project. So I'm focusing on the growth rate of the pua ama in the pahui'a of the local vai at Kaumaui. Right now I'm in the process of moving them into groups of 25. Today was the first day that I did my sample because there's been a lot of preparation coming up to it because there's, there's just like a lot of pilikia with the pua ama and the local itself. So I'm trying to figure that out while also continuing with my project. I guess there's still, even though there's been a lot of problems and like they're like, some are dying and it's not going that well, there's still a lot, they're still doing well. There's, even with the bad conditions, they're still fighting. So I think just because they're still going, I'm like, I can't give up on this project. So I'm just gonna keep 
trying to, I'm just gonna keep, I don't know, keep going, I guess. Till they get released. Loco is all the Aina. And then, but you need all the science because it don't make sense. <laughs> so I think it goes together. It all goes together. But I think that's what Malama Aina is. It's all science and, it's all science. We work off the land, like all the food we eat, we like, we grow here, we make it, we, we're kind of already sustaining ourselves. That's what this whole place is about, is to sustain the community. We're not there yet, one day we will be, but it's enough for what we have right now. I don't want to speak for anyone, but um, I think at the end of the day, feeding our people is so important. Especially in today's time, like it's so iffy, <laughs> you know, like we don't know what happens if we close down the harbor for whatever reason, you know? There's so many different things and it's so multi-layered that it comes to a point where it's like, okay, are we gonna continue to rely on all of these imports or are we gonna try to figure out what are the alternative ways? And while this practice and what we're doing here is not ha exactly how our kupuna did, um, we know that they were adaptive and that they, you know, did learn from, from others and, and adapted it in a way that, that best fit them and best fit these different spaces. The Native Hawaiians were among the best and earliest aquaculturists in, you know, the world and it's important. These kids, they naturally have that ability. It's just in their DNA. They're super hands-on learners. If they can take what I teach them in the classroom and then apply it, it makes it so much more engaging for them and it makes it real. I would always want to give back to my community because it was, it gave me a lot growing up. What I love about my community is that they never give up, even even though plenty of people doubt us, they look down on us, say that we're not where we're supposed to be in life, there's always good people around here to change mindsets or change per perspectives of other people. And if we all can come together and do that as a community, then why and I can come out on top always. That's what I feel. This project was never written up. It was never submitted for funding. It just it just happened. This is one of these like projects that just kind of happened. I, I think of it as somewhat of a snapshot of, of kind of more of the things that, that are happening. Originally, what we had thought to address with this uh, is, it was, was this lack of knowledge and this idea of, okay, can we use modern technology to try to help fill in some of the gaps that practitioners that manage local you deal with right now. Um, but then, the other part that always happens, which is the coolest part, is the, is the learning, right? And, and again, these projects were designed to learn, for us to learn. Like, we don't know, we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, but, you know, to have the students and the keiki teach us, that's the best part. Just move forward and try to feed our people and, and get the kids motivated because at the end of the day, auntie's going to be gone and come on. Babies, you guys got <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs>